Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. Uh, so want to go ahead and dive into a college football recruiting story. And let me, even before we get into the details, let me just say this. One of the things that I love about this job, what I do, the things that you guys and girls consume is one of the things I love is not just always reacting to a story, but sometimes trying to figure out the story behind the story. Like this happened, but what does it really mean? And what could happen and all that good stuff. Okay. And so I bring it up because I want to focus on a story that happened in college football recruiting, but I want to focus on what could be a much bigger story involving that team right there, the Colorado Buffaloes, who are obviously led by none other than Coach Prime. Yes, Deion Sanders. So let's go ahead and dive in. The recruiting story on paper just looks like another, you know, edit on Twitter and Instagram. Doesn't feel like it should be a big story. The story, though, is that there is a four-star player, four-star safety, named Byron Baldwin Jr., who decommitted from Indiana on Wednesday, okay? For people who don't follow recruiting, this kid, you know, six foot one, six foot two, lanky, athletic, very talented player. He's from St. Francis, which is a powerhouse in the Baltimore area, um, was committed to Indiana, was the highest rated player in Indiana's class. And just a, a really talented player that would have been really good for an Indiana program that I am so impressed by under Kurt Signetti, the new head coach, okay? But of course, if it was just a top 250, now, by the way, depending on the recruiting service, some have them as like a top 150 player. But the point is, if it was just about a four-star safety decommitting from uh, any school on any day, I don't know that we'd be talking about it. It happens all the time. Why I want to talk about it is because Byron Bolton Jr., Four-star safety, was committed to Indiana as of this morning. Well, it seems like for all intents and purposes, he is going to end up a Colorado Buffalo. And so this appears, it is not official as I'm recording. Now that changes quickly sometimes. It appears as though he is soon to be a Colorado Buffalo. And let me just say this. One, this would be another major recruiting win for Coach Prime. I think it would speak to what an elite recruiter he is, how he is just so dynamic when you put him in front of kids and parents. But also, let me say this. If you are paying attention, if you got your ear to the ground, this feels like it could be a sick, awesome, insane recruiting run, a big-time recruiting run for the Buffs. So let's go ahead and dive into everything. First of all, Baldwin, I just told you, six foot one, six foot two, safety from the state of Maryland, committed to Indiana. He had some other offers at the time, and his recruitment has actually picked up quite a bit, um, even during the the time he was committed to Indiana. Was told that Alabama reached out. Don't know if they officially offered yet. A couple other SEC schools, I think maybe Auburn, but all the tea leaves are pointing towards Colorado. And it's it, there's a few reasons I think he is going to be a buff. It might have happened by the time that you listened. Uh, but even if it doesn't, uh, I think it's going to happen here in the coming weeks at the very least. Okay. Why Colorado? Well, first of all, he just went on a visit two weeks ago. He was at that game. It's easy to forget now. You know, Colorado time seems to go by way faster than everybody else time. Coach Prime time. That, that sounded weird. But Coach Prime time. Because that game against Baylor that ended with the Hail Mary to force overtime, Travis Hunter, the force fumble to win the game. It feels like it happened 10 years ago. They go to UCF, they absolutely destroy everybody, but this kid Byron Baldwin Jr. was on campus that weekend. Loved the visit, did the visit, you know, did the, 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 the photo shoots, you know, was wearing the uniform, parent, you know, family uh, did interviews after the, the, the weekend. They raved about the Colorado atmosphere. Now, I give Indiana credit. They really pushed and tried to convince him to kind of hold off on the decommitment, maybe visit campus another time. But he decommits not long after Colorado, of course, uh, that he's on campus at Colorado. Beyond that, thought it was interesting. This kind of got lost in the shuffle, although we did talk about it on this channel either last week or the week before. But following that Baylor win, there was uh, a flip Outside of Byron Baldwin Jr., there was a flip by the, the, the a kid by the name of Antonio Branch Jr., okay? 
And I bring it up because at the time we talked about it because he was committed to Penn State, flips to Colorado. And what was noteworthy about that specific flip was that Coach Prime can't talk about unsigned players, but was asked at a press conference like, hey, you guys publicly had a pretty big flip this past weekend. Uh, you had a pretty big commitment, I think was the word used. Um, no, you can't talk about the player, but what does it say about the state of the program? Coach Prime kind of winked and smiled and nodded and said, one, we got one commitment. I could have sworn we got three. I could have sworn we got three. So you know more are in the works. There are probably some silent commitments. Byron Baldwin Jr., of course, was on campus. Even at the time, as soon as he left, there were reports that he was going to decommit from Indiana. This one feels pertinent. And by the way, you know how I, I feel pretty good that Byron Baldwin Jr. is going to be a buff? Because after the, the, the graphic goes up, Hayes Fawcett has the graphic. What ends up happening? Boom. All these Colorado accounts start tagging them on stuff, start tagging them on graphics, start tagging them in graphics with Colorado uniforms, uh, with a Colorado uniform on, and he's retweeting all of them. So if it ain't Colorado, he's doing a heck of a job. He's got a heck of a poker face because he's leading everyone down that path, and I do expect him to be a commitment to the Buffs again here soon. With that said, though, he ain't going to be the last, and I think there is a chance Coach Prime really, even in the high school ranks, goes on a really nice run here in recruiting, a really big-time run, frankly, the likes of which, if Coach Prime wants to, if he wants to put his foot on the gas in the high school ranks, I think he has a chance to, to put together a class unlike anything Colorado has ever seen, okay? Now, to be clear, we know Coach Prime stance. He wants a lot of grad transfers. He wants a lot of older players. He wants a lot of transfers to develop within the program. He's not afraid to take, you know, we've seen him take 50 or 60, but I think even if the program's rolling, He's not afraid to take 2025 20, transfers. To him, that's not unnormal. And by the way, it's working for him. That's the crazy part, right? Oh, this will never work. Too many, too much turnover, not enough continuity. It's like, well, they took a bunch of transfers, and a lot of them are contributing this year. Lejante Wester, who caught that Shador Sanders deep pass, is a transfer in his first year at Colorado. By the way, his brother plays on defense, had a big uh, play on defense. I believe he was the one that forced the fumble that Cameron Silmon Craig returned for a touchdown. Could be mistaken on that. Don't yell at me. Whatever. But the Wester brothers are both balling out, okay? Uh, on top of that, Will Shepard, transfer from Vandy, balling out. Big touchdown against uh, against uh, UCF this past weekend. The, some of the best defensive players they have, BJ Green, among others. So the transfer thing is working. But I do wonder if if Coach Prime says, you know what, instead of taking seven or eight high school guys, we're going to take 15 or so, I think he could put together an insane class, okay? Because right now, as we record, he's only got uh, eight high school commits. If we add Byron Baldwin, let's assume, uh, we're talking about four four-stars in that class, okay? But what happen well, what you need to pay attention to is what could happen here in the coming weeks. First off, that same weekend that Byron Baldwin Jr. and Antonio Branch Jr. were on campus, there was a four-star offensive tackle, high four-star, top 150 player committed to USC named Carday Smith that was on campus, okay? Um, not ready to say that he's going to be a Buffalo, but it's worth noting. He was there for an unofficial visit, and now he has scheduled an official visit for the back end of October. In October, uh, Colorado plays uh, Cincinnati at home, and so he's ex expected to be on campus for that game. Excuse me. And so... Could that be a guy? By the way, this is the cool part. This is the funny part. And this shows why Coach Prime is, is so unique and so different than anybody else in the sport, okay? Um, because this past weekend, they played at UCF. Now, we know Coach Prime is from Florida. Um, and we know, listen, like every school in America, he wants to recruit Florida. And it's kind of crazy. Now, listen, I'm sure other guys, Kirby Smart's done stuff like this, whatever. But he basically used UCF as a Colorado recruiting event okay because he basically hit up the best players in the state of florida said hey man you might as well come down you might as well see the show the colorado show is going to rock the colorado show is going to roll you are going to want to be part of this but you're going to want to come and see it in person and so what ends up happening dallas wilson a five-star receiver from the tampa area been committed to oregon forever comes down to the game um you know i i think he may have spoken with coach prime. I don't know the exact rules. I, I don't know exactly if you're allowed to talk to coaches. If you're not allowed, I would assume if you're on a visit and you're meeting with one staff, you're certainly allowed to speak with the other one. So I think coach prime had a chat with them. Like, Hey man, thanks for coming. 
Now enjoy the show. Let's get you out to Colorado. Will he ever flip Dallas Wilson? I don't know. Tough sell. Oregon's awesome. Oregon's got a lot to offer, including, you know, you know, the Johnny Manziel, you know, whatever. Um, so I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but it's worth noting kid visited the kid visited UCF and basically just used it to hang out with coach prime. By the way, there was a four-star defensive lineman committed to LSU as of right now. Um, a player, let me see if I can find the name, Jesse Harold. That's who it is. Top 100 player, defensive lineman committed to LSU from the state of Florida, came to the UCF game to watch Colorado. There's talk about him potentially visiting as well. So listen, you know, you're not going to get all these kids. Nobody gets everybody. But I mean, like I said, you start adding those high school kids on top of what Coach Prime is going to do in the portal. Oh, it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be interesting. And I can't wait to see how this class closes up. Byron Baldwin Jr. is not official. We'll see if he becomes official here soon. But I think this is the first of many. What, four more big home games? Kansas State, Utah, Cincinnati, and Oklahoma State. They're going to get kids to campus. When they get them there, it's hard to say no. Cannot wait to see how this class unfolds.